The fun thing with this design is that um, I can be as messy and random as I want. Because it's just like a, a little bit of almost like map, my mapping. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of the Everyday Talent Podcast. As you can see, I am not in front of the computer today. I'm here with my really good friend, Millie. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Uh, so we have Millie here because you have a fascinating creative career path. We've known each other for many years, so we know each other's stories. Mm -hmm. And today, uh, it's, I'm really happy to sh like invite you to share your story to the audience. So to start with, why don't you tell the audience like what you do and how you come to do what you do? Mm -hmm. um, so I have two things I do. One is my nine to five, uh, where I work in the film industry, film and TV. Um, and I've been doing that for 11, over 11 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and then something that I do on the side, which is more of my business, is I am a nail artist. So I do hand painted uh, designs on nails. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, I guess like in some way, like your combo is very unique. Like I, I, I don't know that many nail artists who also mm -hmm. work in like film and media. Uh, and but it also at the same time, it's very uh, common that nowadays we have like kind of different lanes in our career. Mm -hmm. um, tell us kind of the origin story of like how you got into nail design and nail art. Yeah. So I've been practicing nails for over 17 years. Mm -hmm. um, I always blame my mother for getting me started with that. Really? I remember watching tapes when I was uh, for my first birthday back in the back in 1991 um, and having my nails painted for my first birthday. Um, and it was just something, I don't know, I, I always liked to kind of um, play dress up and then um, as I got older and into my preteens and teens, I started kind of experimenting with different tools that I would use um, and it wasn't something that other people around me did they would either just kind of like paint their nail one color um, and I wanted to I guess get a little bit more creative with it um, I was very um, my high school career and my university career and even my career now was very academic based mm. um, so that's where there's a little bit of this like juxtaposition in terms of what I do with the nails and what I do in my day-to-day -day life. So it was very like studious. Um, I was an overachiever in school mm. um, and in my career now, even when I say I work in film and television, it's not in a very creative role. Mm. Um, I work more on uh, contracts and like pretty like data heavy type of work the administrative side yeah, yeah more of the administrative side um and so nails were always my creative outlet um and it's really expanded in terms of uh the types of tools that i use and the, te the techniques that i uh that i use to do to to make the different designs um yeah, I don't have any like straight answer as to like how I got into it. It just kind of really expanded. I guess it was my creative outlet and something that was unique that nobody else was doing around me. Yeah. Um, and that was something that I, I don't know, I just never really thought about it as, um, as something that like made me stand out. Mm -hmm. It was just something that I really loved doing. So you just like the there's like I hear that there is a thread of like you love doing it so like there wasn't really like any need or pressure for mm -hmm. you to continue other than like I love doing this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think my relationship with it changed very much throughout the years. Mm. Um just even like the switch from doing it just as something that I did only for myself to then incorporating it, uh, you know, in my friendships and doing it for other people and then expanding it into a business. Um, and even just throughout the years of having it as a business, my relationship to it has changed so much. Mm. Tell me a bit about like, since you found it, like since you've kind of formalized a business around it, how has your relationship with you nail know, art changed? Yeah, so I tried, you know, before I started as like a more official sort of business, I was kind of doing these like n what I would call nail parties. Mm -hmm. So I would invite a few friends over to my place or host it, you know, a friend of mine would host it. 
and um you know the the people that would attend they were just like super into it like i would be doing one person's nails while everybody mm -hmm. else was just kind of like chatting um, so it was a very like interactive thing and that's sort of where a lot of it expanded there was more interest and people would always just be like why don't you have this as a business and i was like yeah. one because i don't have time because it's so like it's time consuming to do nails but yeah. then also like i had my full-time jobs at the time and um you know my life outside of that um and uh yeah like i think when i first started doing nails as a business it was so small and i didn't really even think about the possibilities of of the world of nails yeah. and it was it, i started it at a time when like nail art wasn't that popular mm -hmm. um we're talking about like five six years i think ago? it's been like mm -hmm. s seven mm. seven or eight years ago now yeah. Um, and then, uh, I, I forget what happened. Oh, and then I, I just like went through a really like terrible period mentally and I kind of wasn't working and I decided, you know, after, you know, going through a lot of that, I decided to pursue getting, um, um, a nail tech license. Yeah. So I got certified for that. And then I was able to find a job at, um, a, um, uh, a nail bar it was like a really popular nail bar mm -hmm. here in toronto um and unfortunately it didn't work out in the way that i wanted it to like mm -hmm. that was also another challenge for me is i had an idea of what this world was going to look like mm -hmm. but it was very different working there versus going to a salon like being a client versus working there um and then I worked there for like maybe a month. It was it was a great experience in terms of like the things that I learned and the people that I got to meet, but it was so removed from the world that I was used to in terms of my nine to five career. Mm. Um, and I was juggling way too much. I was working part time in the animation industry at the time and also working part time at the nail nail salon. Mm -hmm. And so between those two, I was working six days a week. Wow. Um, and I just needed to step away from the nail stuff for a little bit and, and focus on, you know, being in animation for a while. And again, in an admi administrative role. Yeah. So it wasn't creative. Um, and I needed to take a, st like, take a pause on doing nails for a while because it also, there's an aspect of nails that is so physical. Like I'm hunched over all of the time. And yes. I get Your eyes. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I get a lot of eye strain. There's so many of these like little things that, day to day you don't really think about yeah um and so that was another like sort of shift for me and you know I kind of got back into it a little bit but not in the same capacity and then the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and no one was seeing people in mm -hmm. person anymore and not that I was seeing clients all the time but I would just like you know even like the nail parties that mm -hmm. I would have that all had to like come to a stop prior to the pandemic I was like doing pop-up shops and you know right. uh, painting nails at different events and stuff which was really fun um, but unfortunately that had to stop and then I had to shift to um, doing press on nails mm -hmm. and that became that like like became so big everybody started doing press on nails like yes. people that have never even painted nails in their life were like I'm gonna start selling press on nails um, and so that was really difficult for me because it was something that I really mm. loved doing and I had been practicing for such a long time yeah. um, that, you know, now there was a whole other level of competition that I had. Mm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just like my relationship to, to it since starting the business has been so up and down because I go through periods where like I have... Um, I hit a creative stride and I really love it and yeah. it's fun. And then, you know, like once social media is involved and like selling is involved and marketing is involved, that's the part that I don't find so fun. Yeah. Um, because I have to like convince people like why my art is worthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the honesty that you have in terms of like the ups and downs of like mm -hmm. uh, pursuing a creative business because certainly a lot of people who are kind of in that spot of like I have this creative hobby I want to explore whether it can become a thing I can see I want to see whether it can be profitable mm -hmm. like there's a lot of thinking that needs to be involved yeah, with yeah. going into it and like 
sometimes it's also about managing people's expectation that it yeah. doesn't immediately turn into it might, but it also might not immediately turn into your other full time job. Yeah. Or would you like it anyway if it becomes your yeah. other full time yeah, job? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And mm -hmm. that's something that I've thought about so many times, and I've had conversations with friends about, and my partner mm -hmm. is like. You know, if I did this as a full time thing, am I going to start hating it at a certain point? And I think because of the fact that, like, I've gone through so many ups and downs with the business while having it mostly part time or something that I do on the side, kind of tells me that I actually wouldn't really like it as full time because, mm. especially like now at this point in my life, like, you know, uh, to be fully transparent, I. I had a diagnosis of uh, having a vestibular disorder, so it's like where mm. my balance is off, and a lot of it is triggered from neck tension. And uh -huh. so I found that what makes it worse is when I do nail art for very long periods of time. Okay. And so like I'll do it and I'm enjoying it in the moment, but then the next day I'm like dizzy and completely incapacitated. Right. So I have to pace myself, and this is where the idea of like flexibility really comes into um, my business and what I do. Mm -hmm. So tell us like uh, how you design that pace and that like get that balance them when you're running your business and also have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. uh, because like health, like as I hear, health, mental health really matter to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's really just about like checking in with myself and seeing what my priorities are. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, like at this point in my life, what's more important to me? Yes, I, I love having these creative pursuits, but it's not so much the pursuit of money. It's more the pursuit of the pleasure of the creativity. Um, and that's why I want to do the nails. So that's where I'm having to constantly shift my idea of what a business can be. Um, it doesn't have to be just constantly like chasing paper and um, you know, sell, sell, sell and marketing all the time because I find that really difficult, especially as a, like a single business owner. Um, and so I have to, as I said, like create a new idea of what that business would look like for me. And like, even if it's just me expressing myself, mm -hmm. Um, that's how I'm trying to view it as opposed to this is my means of income. Right. Um, and that's where that sort of like shift came in is where I see my nine to five as just like, this is what pays the bills. Mm -hmm. And then I create, I have to create that boundary like mentally for myself to, you know, from nine to five, like this is what I'm doing. And then after those hours, I'm able to like focus and work on my creative business and, uh, my nail art, even if it's not for creating it for the business itself, even mm -hmm. if it's just for me to like have pretty nails. Mm -hmm. Those, like I hear those compartmentalization helps you. Yeah. That like exiting, especially in the world of like, like remote working mm -hmm. and working from home and you work from home yeah. all the time too, that like exiting from like, okay, five o'clock and beyond and yeah. into the mode of like creative versus but my goal or my grounding for the creative business is not about making money necessarily. It can be a bit, a bit about that, but like yeah. mostly it's a creative outlet. Yeah. yeah, I think because, you know, like I've had to come to terms with the fact that like um, my pursuit of nail art as a business is never going to look the same way that I initially set out for it to look, mm -hmm. which is like I wanted it, I wanted to be this like, great artist and have so many clients and start my own shop and blah, 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 blah. And that is really difficult. Not even just like the, the aspect of like having your own shop because I work out of my home and like, it's yeah. really difficult for me to have clients in here because this is where I live. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want just anybody coming in. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think that's kind of the beauty of where um, the whole press on nail aspect of it came into play is like, it wasn't just for the purposes of the, of the pandemic, I took it through, like, even after that point, um, it allows me to like, still create my art without having to, ha like, physically have people in my space. Yeah, have that boundaries. That yeah, 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 yeah. That's that, that's right, like, the product itself translates, like, well, how you want to conduct yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's really great, like that, like you come to this realization as your vision evolve because, like, I mean, like as like online and e-commerce business or creative business boom, like there's a lot of like pressure out there. In yeah. Terms of, like yeah. Social media. We open our social media. So and so has business. Yeah. So and so is doing a shop. Yeah. And 
and sometimes we can get I mean we talk about this before mm-hmm. apparently that like we get lost in that yeah one can like get lost in the hustle of like before we know it this becomes another toxic job yeah and and I think that's the part too that is like I have to constantly check myself on is like even when I have a new idea of something that I want to mm-hmm. do like I started doing um illustrated greeting cards and uh different yes. types of illustrations mm-hmm. during the pandemic and that was something that I never really thought about I just naturally started painting more for myself mm-hmm. um and then sort of expanded it into you know doing very specific types of design so I like to focus on like 90s and 2000s uh, nostalgic sort of designs because it's something that like fulfills me and makes me feel good Um, and uh, I forget where I was going with that (laughs) Oh, that you you want to say that that's something that you started to do for yourself? Yeah. Oh, oh that, that's what I was yeah. saying. So I have to even like check myself in thinking like, am I doing this because I'm enjoying it or am I doing it to like make money? Mm-hmm. So like I don't want necessarily my my primary um, purpose for something to be making like, sales. Yeah. Like I want it to also feel good while I'm doing it because mm-hmm. if it's just to make sales, then it just becomes a job. Yeah, yeah, totally. I was just going to get to the uh, greeting cards because like you started, I, I follow you and I know that like you started doing it and then um, it became like something that you do quite regularly. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask like just from the creative front that like painting watercolor on a car, how is that different from like painting on nails? Yeah, it's, there's, there's similarities and there's like very big differences. Mm -hmm. So part of the reason why I didn't want to start painting like more traditional type of painting Mm -hmm. is because I was really like, I found it really daunting. Like I'm so used to um, painting on a very small space Mm -hmm. that I feel like anything that's bigger, you can catch the mistakes a lot more Um, and you can get away with a lot like with making Uh, mistakes on a smaller space because you're like well this is really difficult work so of course it's not going to be perfect um and so the idea of like a bigger canvas i was like i have way more things that i need to think about that i need to put on paper and blah 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 blah. but as soon as i started thinking that way like that's that's the stuff that like stopped me from doing it and Mm. i used to love painting when i was a kid Mm. um and i haven't done it since i was probably like 15 or something like that um in like in the traditional way so once I started sort of experimenting with it I looked at it as just an experiment like Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for fun I saw it as a challenge let's see what happens and I really enjoyed doing it um and then I think it also depended on like the type of design that I was doing so um as soon as I started doing things that made me feel cozy and made me feel like playful those were the things that I was like you know my like the pencil and like the the paintbrush they were just like flowing across the paper um and that's the same thing with nail art if I have a client that comes in and they just want like something that I'm not necessarily like too stoked about like Mm -hmm. you know like very excited about the idea I'm still gonna do it but I'm not gonna have as much um fun doing it Mm -hmm. just knowing that like some projects are like it's for the the heart yeah the heart is for the, exactly the, the business sometimes yeah, yeah 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 but like i resonate so much with like your <laughs> that it's interesting for me to hear because i never paint on nail mm-hmm. that you're like oh mistakes are more obvious on a bigger canvas because i always thought oh my god like i every time i look at your pose i was like those details on the nail <laughs> i don't know how you achieve it and but i definitely resonate with the part that once you start thinking about like all the details that need to go into a painting because i do a little bit of watercolor mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. that's what stops you like, yeah you have to kind of almost like focus on the big shapes yeah or, like what excites you in your picture yeah yeah exactly to get some like to start somewhere yeah 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 and i think that's the same thing with like the nail art so there that's where i said like there are similarities like the whole idea of how the design comes about and you know, like reference images and whatever, it's very much the same. Mm -hmm. It's just that the the techniques are a little bit different. So like, um, you know, where when I'm painting like watercolor or doing illustrations, I start off with a sketch first, Mm -hmm. as opposed to with doing nails. I mean, people do it differently, obviously. There are people that kind of do the same sort of technique of doing a sketch on nails. But the way that I do it is like, 
and I always tell clients too, I'm like, mm -hmm. it looks like a blob right now, but it's not going to end up looking like a blob. Right. So like I start off with the bigger shapes and then I mm -hmm. go into with the details. Mm, so the process, there's some mm -hmm. definitely similarity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you talk about your vision has evolved in like throughout the pandemic in the past, like it's been a long time now. Like mm -hmm. I remember going to one of your mm -hmm. like, nail parties, like I think that must be like seven, eight years mm -hmm. ago. Looking ahead, like, what are some like kind of aspirations that you have for yourself or for the and or for the nail business? Um, I don't know. It's it's so hard for me to think about like the farther future because mm -hmm. right now I'm like still trying to figure out how I'm gonna go about doing nails with these like new. Um, diagnosis in terms of like yes. ha striking that balance between you know taking care of my health mm -hmm. and like being very aware that like um, me doing nails um, affects my health mm -hmm. um, and not even just about like the physical aspects of it but just you know like breathing in some of the fumes and that's why I try and use mm -hmm. um, uh, I try and use like materials that are more organic and it's, like not yeah. as harsh um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard. I'm trying to, it, I'm the type of person that likes to plan so far ahead and mm -hmm. I kind of like to, you know, I'm very future thinking, but with this particular thing, I've had to slow down and be very like present and mindful and just kind of take it like, honestly, like one day at, one a, day time. at a time. Um, a new thing that I'm kind of trying out for the season is doing markets Mm -hmm. Um, so that's been kind of fun and, you know, being in front of people and, uh, you know, I've been reaching out to different shops to see whether they would want to, um, carry any of my, my, um, my items. Um, and yeah, that's... it's one of those things where like, I'll see what happens. <laughs> I, it, you know, like I still have to have that business mind mm -hmm. and because I'm so used to like in my nine to five, I'm it's very like business minded, like administrative, yeah. looking at numbers, budgeting, planning things, blah, blah, blah. I have to also be mindful of the fact that like, this is just an experiment right now. Mm -hmm. I have to see how it goes and then I'm going to plan further. Mm -hmm. I can't plan so far ahead because I don't know what, honestly, like at the end of the day, what my revenue is going to be like. Yeah. And I, I thank you for like bringing that like uh, health aspect into the conversation and share that because I think that's like, like, you know, it's very personal to you. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's very uh, important for people to hear, like, you know, health, like, matters a lot to us. We... Yeah. Just as human. Yeah. But also, like, as solopreneur, like, because mm -hmm. you are your business, and then something, like, it impacts your health, it impacts everything. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's okay, perhaps, that, like, like, the existence of this business is, like, to co-hold that presence with you to navigate as things comes up and yeah totally and, and when you reach a phase where like you feel like okay this is this season last season was like kind of day by day this season I might be able to do yeah and and I think that's that's what I've learned through the business is that you know to to kind of be open to possibilities mm -hmm. I don't want to cut things off and just be like I'm never doing this type of thing again because I can I can return to it at a later time and that's that's a hundred percent what my nail art business has taught me. As I said, like it's been so up and down and like my relationship with it has changed and I've returned to like, even if it's techniques or like the way that I run my business, I've returned to certain things that I did many years ago that I thought I was never going to do again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Always open to possibilities, routes that we travel to or yeah. haven't traveled to. Yeah. Yeah. So if someone was to think about like, you know, whether it's nail art or any kind of, kind of like creative business, something that they have a product and they want to like turn it into some kind of e-commerce business or service-based mm -hmm. business. What advice do you have for those people? Um, I mean, look at your options. Shopify is not always the only thing mm. that you can go to. Um, having an audience outside of just your social media is important. So doing like newsletters and stuff because there you know, like my partner even his instagram recently was just like completely shut down randomly mm. and he can't get back into the account yeah. so you know like you have to have backups mm. um those are just very like practical things um i think 
also like really actually planning out the like the budget aspect like you have to be i know that finance the financial side of things can be really stressful for people mm -hmm. but it will set you up for success ultimately in the in the future mm -hmm. like you know something that i do is um i have to like write down what all of my costs are like to the nitty-gritty of like each tiny material like the packaging yes. everything how much that costs me so that i can figure out what how I can value like monetarily how I can price. value yeah, yeah price my yeah. products and that goes for service-based businesses too is like how much time are you putting in and it's not just the time I think that's part of the thing that like a lot of consumers don't really think about for when they're dealing with people that are in small like solopreneurs is how much time this person has put into the education aspect of it and mm -hmm. like how much time they put into the practice of their work right so like you know, something that I talk to my partner about a lot of the time is like, it might look like it takes us like a really quick amount of time to do this, but that's because we've been practicing it for yeah. like a decade or more, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's also just about educating the consumer and that's where, you know, um, part of my business that I kind of like to involve the consumer in is the transparency aspect of it. So like even educating them on like, this there's a reason why my product costs so much as an example is mm. because there's all of these hidden costs behind it mm. being transparent in your communication yeah yeah definitely like especially with like artisanal artisanal things like there is like the craft and the, the style too mm -hmm. that you're that's of value that is not about like i said this in another solo episode it's like people are not paying us to do things slowly yeah but uh uh to do things fast, it means that you have the expertise. Yeah. And that's what's off value. Totally. So I resonate with that a lot. Yeah. And, and sorry, one yeah. other thing that I would also add is just generally like what if you were a solopreneur and you're working with um, somebody else, mm -hmm. contracts are so important to have. Like it doesn't have to be for like everyday things, obviously when you're doing sales or whatever and dealing mm -hmm. with that type of consumer. But like if, for example, you're doing... Um, like a major event for somebody or uh, you know like I've done a couple video shoots and stuff like that um, make sure that you either have a contract or that you have some sort of written information down because anything that's verbally said is not necessarily going to be you're no one's going to be held liable yeah. for it yes I love that and I that's very that's awesome. the practical your like yeah <laughs> your day job yeah. is coming into it but it's helping I mean knowing yeah. that like you know, in your career, we've dealt with contracts in like bigger film productions and yeah. things like that. That I think helps you to know like what can be at stake. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. protecting yourself. But I mean, that even goes with, you know, like when you're signing up for websites or whatever, or e-commerce or any of those like services, like you don't have to read through the terms and conditions necessarily, mm -hmm. but like look at what, what you're paying for. You know, yes. because there are a lot of hidden costs even in that too. Yeah, I love that you brought up that point because I think a lot of people who are a little bit worried or afraid of like be the one that let's sign a contract. Mm -hmm. I always tell them that like, and this didn't come from me, it's come from someone else. I heard this line, it's like a contract is the starting point of a good relationship. Yeah, exactly. If like you go into a business like a situation and the other person is not willing to like, even if they think it's like chummy chummy like mm -hmm. we're friends and blah, blah blah like if there is actually a business deal you is there to protect this friendship and the yeah, relationship totally the impact. Yeah. yeah it's 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 a tangible boundary that you're creating right mm -hmm. and uh ultimately that's a big lesson that i've learned over the last couple of years is like the importance of boundaries and they actually make uh you know both the tangible and things like relationships a lot healthier yeah totally so uh maybe if people were to try to find your business or they want to check out your press or nails or any other mm -hmm. amazing things that you do uh where can they find you yeah so uh you can check out www.rhymeswithpizza.com uh, that's my website and it has all of the different links. You mm -hmm. can find me on Etsy. I'm doing a couple markets uh, coming up soon. Um, my Instagram is rhymes underscore with underscore pizza. Um, yeah. Amazing. Uh, I am going to put those links on the show notes. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for Thank you. coming on here. This is great. Yay. Thanks. Thanks.